Chris Barefoot Bolton is avoiding those thorns as he hunts an impressive lechwe bull. We have wildlife news where millions are spent at auction. Plus game health check. We find out what it takes to keep the best breeding stock healthy. I'm Richard Leonard and this is Field Sports Africa. Welcome back to Field Sports Africa. Today we reconnect with Chris Barefoot Bolton and Chris and Jack Wood from Australia. It's a new day and we're looking for another highly sought after quarry here in Africa. In our first episode, Chris managed to take a buck of a lifetime, a 30 inch water buck bull. This time, Chris has his eyes set on an old lechware bull, an animal that thrives here on the hunting ranches in the Eastern Cape, growing impressive horns and a stunning red pelt. The following morning, we got up nice and early. Chris said that he had a, a special spot picked out for us today, the most amazing place for us to hunt. He said it was really beautiful, the scenery was amazing. We said, yep, that sounds like a really great start to the day. Let's go for it. Up on a ridge line glassing, Chris spotted a lone lechway bull standing down on the flats. He said, look, this is an amazing animal. You're not going to get another opportunity like this. Let's put a stalk in on the lechway. So what I think is uh, the wind's coming from the left hand side. We're going to head down to our right. Yeah, there's a there's an open clearing, like a pathway. Heading down and we get up to the right hand side of him. Yep. And then the, that way the wind's blowing away and then we'll see what happens if we get close enough. If it doesn't work out, we'll try a different plan. But that's the idea right now. As we started moving along the top of the ridge, we bumped into a herd of elant, the largest antelope species in the world. We must have been only 60 yards away from them and they had no idea we were there. But no time to hang around with the eland. We needed to get back on track with the lechwe bull. We get in that and use the washout. And then use that as a stalking. Yeah, now we can definitely do that. Let's do that. Let's see if we can get into that washout. Yeah. I said to Chris, look, let's drop into the washout. That way we're, we're out of the skyline, we're not going to be seen, we're below the scrub, and we can get to within about three, four hundred metres of the lechway. It was hard stalking through the washout, there were boulders, there were tree roots and thorn bushes, but it kept us out of sight. Finally, we had to come out and come back up onto the normal level ground and risk exposing ourselves. Luckily there was a lot of scrub around where we came out and we managed to track in, go from scrub to scrub, bush to bush, tree to tree, behind boulders and small little rises in the ground kept us pretty well covered. 
finally we got to a point where we had to get on our hands and knees and crawl and we got to within about 50 metres of the letchway. We'd stalked maybe three kilometres on, on, on our way to, to where we were from where we'd seen the letchway. It was a long stalk but everything went perfect, everything went as planned. Chris set up the sticks behind a small bush. It was nice and calm and relaxed. I took my time. Ready? Yeah. I took the shot. It was absolutely perfect. The letchway dropped. It didn't move. <laughs> yes. Yes, he was keen to go, but he wasn't too sure what the heck we were. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the way he was facing the me. Yeah. yeah, he was about to get out of here. Yeah, he was out of here. Right, you know, yeah. 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 It'll probably be another year, year and a half he's done. It was a real privilege being able to share these moments with Chris and Jack and to see Chris's dreams come true was as much a joy for me as I think it was for him. Yeah, we had a, uh, we had a really long stalk. We, we started up on the ridge there, about 700, 800 metres away. Followed the ridge line down into a saddle. In the saddle we got into a, a washout and we, we walked down the watercourse kept out of the, uh, the skyline and that got us to within about three, four hundred metres. Then we had to sneak through the bush. Here we got, got within 50 metres of, of the animal and uh, it was better down. It didn't know we were there. It kind of got onto us right at the last minute and stood up and that's when I took the shot. It just dropped back down and yeah, the animal didn't move, didn't know what hit it. A nice, good, clean shot. It was a really good hunt. Thank you very much, Chris. It's an, it's an excellent stay, an excellent trip, excellent hunt. This was just the icing on the cake. It was, it was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was great having you. It was, it was a good time. Had a lot of fun. Now we're heading into a roundup of conservation and hunting news from this great continent. Welcome to African Wildlife News. I'm Beth Sylvester. 35 there we have now. 135 million there. 135 for in A buffalo bull has sold for a record price at game auction. 168 million there. I've sold it. Thank you very much indeed. Impressive looking Inala was sold for 168 million rand or over 12 million US dollars at the Tabatolo game auction. According to breeders, African buffalo used to have horns spanning wider than 60 inches but uncontrolled hunting practices remove the largest animals from the gene pool. Inala's hornspan comes in as an impressive 51 inches and 3 eighths, making him one of the three largest in South Africa. Taxonomists have declared the giraffe come in fours, not ones. Up until now, giraffes have been recognised by the world as a single species, with nine subspecies occurring throughout the African continent. However, researchers have just discovered that there are in fact four different species of giraffe. The Giraffe Conservation Foundation wanted to understand genetic differences between populations and the possible conservation impact of mixing subspecies together. A citizen science project is helping with zebra conservation. In the first of its kind, 350 members of the public, communities, rangers and scientists took 40,000 geotagged photos of Grevy zebra. A specialist team then used software to identify individuals from their unique stripe patterns. Another team set about ageing and sexing all of these animals. They believe there are now 2,350 of these zebra in Kenya. And while the numbers are still critically low, the recruitment rate of foals is cause for optimism. The latest rhino poaching figures have been released. In the Kruger National Park, 458 rhino have been killed in poaching incidents since the start of 2016. 
In the same period in 2015, 557 were killed for their horns. So far this year, 414 people have been arrested for rhino poaching and related offences. Reserve managers are taking to the skies to manage game. This is the time of the year when reserve managers conduct a census of game on their land. Helicopters are used to fly transects over the bush and all animal numbers are recorded. It is accurate and it allows trends to be mapped over time. If the game numbers are above the carrying capacity, managers can consider hunting quotas or animal translocations. If numbers are low, they may consider restocking certain species to maintain a balance. This has been African Wildlife News with me, Beth Sylvester. And now we visit Luki Steenkamp. Luki is the owner of Blue Chip Breeders and Safaris in the Limpopo province. Luki has been breeding game for many years now. He's not only passionate about breeding game, but also healthy and effective game management. In today's show, we join Luki and the local vet, Dr. Bester, for some game capture and animal checkups. Luki has a beautiful Inyala bull that needs to be measured and checked up for sale in a couple weeks and a sable cow that seems to be battling to breed and needs some attention. Game breeding in South Africa is one of the most important parts of the wildlife industry and is also known as the lifeline of sustainability to game ranchers here in the country, where hunters of the past have killed off a lot of the great genetics in the natural wild. Men like Luki are working hard to give back and see the great specimens of old return to the gene pools of this great land. Okay, so it's go time. We're just about to leave the farmhouse, get onto the trucks and head on out into the breeding camps. Dr. Bester said that we've got two missions today, two animal captures and different kinds of checkups. So hopefully everything runs smoothly. Let's get out there. Well, first up is the Inyala. We're going to head on out. The vet's here. It's got all, everything prepared. Um, we're about to head into the Inyala camp. Uh, it's the place where the Inyala are kept safe, um, where they breed. Right now, Luki wants to dart the animal, measure it, see what's going on, how, what kind of shape the animal's in, and then uh, from, he from here onwards, uh, he'll then have a better idea on what price to get for that animal when he sells it in a few weeks' time. Well, we've just spotted the Inyala bull we're looking for. Um, they seem to be a little bit skittish and they've run through the bushes. The vet's sitting in the passenger seat, he has the dart gun ready. We're going to see if we can corner them off, get a shot in, get this done quick and clean. We broke away from the fence line and then Luki spotted the Inyala bull we were looking for. The bull wasn't close enough and the bush was too thick to be able to dart from the vehicle. So they decided to rather be safe and take the shot from the shoulder. The vets pulled the shot off really good. He got him right on the backside, exactly where you want to put the dart. Uh, we just got to wait for the medicine to work in, uh, into his system a bit and then uh, we, he should be down and we can have a look at him. Give him some measurements, see how healthy the animal is and then it's good to go. An overdose of morphine was used to sedate the animal. This affects the spiral horn antelope in such a way that they become very relaxed and almost pet-like in nature. With the animal down and sedated, it was time to do the necessary examination, horn measurements and administer essential vitamins. Uh, I think 100,000, 100, okay. maybe 120,000. Right? Right, and does the shape, genetics, age also come into play? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is a, like a bell shape in Plata, uh, Nyala. So it's very nice, nice okay. shape. It's got a 13 and a quarter inch spread and uh, uh, 8 inches base, so it's a nice bull. Wound spray is used on any cuts that may have been caused from thorns or anything else to prevent infections from setting in. 
And last but not least, the microchip is scanned, which helps log the necessary data. And then the antidote is injected into the vein behind the ear to bring the Inola out of narcosis and back to normality. Within seconds it was all over and the Inola ball ran into the bush none the wiser. Look at it, that was very cool to see man. How quick and efficient you guys are. Obviously you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And it's really nice to see how um, the animal is completely safe at all times. There's absolutely no harm to the animal. Yeah. Off he goes, he ran off nicely into the bushes and no problem. There we go, job yeah. done. Very nice to see. Well done guys, look at it. I know absolutely nothing about the veterinary side. So maybe yeah. you, what, what's in that first dot? What do, what do you... Morphine. It's just a morphine overdose. It's lethal to people. Yeah, apparently, I mean, if you get just a little bit in you, you're in trouble, right, as a human being. But the animal can take a whole, a whole dart, a whole dose. Yeah. Okay. And then the point is just to slow him down, right? Yeah, yeah well, they actually you mobilize him eventually. But with these cold, warm animals like the kudu, the nyala, the bushbuck, they actually come towards you. They lose fear of people. So you can wow. call them in after you've darted them. Like you said, I called him and he came to me and you go with him, yeah. It's unreal. Eh? Yeah. I saw that. I was wondering what's happening. Yeah, but he's, he's not aggressive then, obviously. He's yes. very safe. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the plan now? I just want to have a look at a stable cow that's... She's been... She's not in good condition. And I'm worried that the calf... Either the calf takes too much out of her, or it's just the winter time and... Maybe mm. there's something else wrong. I'll just have to have a look. Yeah. Well, the Inyala capture went really well. Um, I was actually surprised at how quick and easy it was. Uh, the guys did the job. It took them a matter of minutes and it was all done. And the Inyala ran off and it was really cool to see. Now we're heading on off to the, the Sable camp. And uh, we're going to be checking out one of the Sable females or Sable cows. And uh, apparently she's been having a, a problem with breeding. So the vet's going to check her out. He doesn't quite know what the issue might be just yet, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we'll, we'll get into the camp now. Let's see if we can get it down as quick and as easy as it was with the Inyala. We're going for this one now. Okay. There's uh, one lying next, uh, closest to us. Okay. It's an old cow, but we'll, we'll try to get the fixed. We just want to give her with vitamins and uh, yeah, deworm her uh, okay. check what's wrong <coughs> because we lost some weight. Uh, okay. And then is that your breedable there? Yeah. Is that your big, yeah, the is that the big boy? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Blue Giant. Blue Giant. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Eh? All right. How, how uh, big is he? What's his name? 47. Horn? 47, eh? Yeah, and he's oh. uh, not four, four years and eight months. Uh, beautiful. Hopefully it will grow. Yeah, he's a beautiful yeah. boy. Man. Lovely. The herd seems to be real relaxed now. So we're going to move in on uh, the female that's not looking too well at the moment. And uh, hopefully it's not too serious. Uh, the vet's going to have a look at her, give her some vitamins and uh, see how she's doing. He nailed the shot, perfect. We're gonna see if we can get onto her now, just give her a little bit of time for the medication to kick in, and then uh, we'll, we'll go up to her, have a look. Hopefully there's nothing too serious wrong with her. The same procedures were followed as that of the Inyala. Luki and Dr. Bester both examined the Sable's general condition and once again vitamins were administered and hoof maintenance was carried out at the same time. Vitamins help boost the animals, especially during drought and lean times as they are currently experiencing. After the antidote was administered, the female sable, although a little unsteady, recovered quickly and rejoined the herd.
Well, that's a wrap. Two successful captures done. And Yolo went real fast. Uh, a really satisfying result, 28 and a half inches. So uh, Lukey Steelcomb, he's very happy with the, what the, the bulls turned out to be. He's gonna be sold in a few weeks time. Then we uh, got the sable down. Uh, not as easy, but again, a really good, safe and ethical capture. Uh, she's actually doing better than they think she's doing. Uh, she did calf, so there's absolutely no problem with her. So happy days here at uh, Blue Chip Breeders and Safaris. Well, thanks for joining us on another great episode here at Field Sports Africa. If you guys would like to come and hunt with us here on the Eastern Cape, then contact me at richard at fieldsportschannel.tv. We'll see you guys next time on Field Sports Africa.